Within human relationships, exchanges can be layered, complicated, and occasionally rather unpleasant. Among the most confusing of these interactions are those involving people displaying narcissistic traits. Though their deceptive and self-centered actions are well known, less often acknowledged is how their influence could reach the spiritual level. Though they are subtle and usually buried beneath layers of charm and charisma, spiritual attacks by narcissists can be quite harmful. Although we usually picture overt acts of evil when we consider spiritual warfare. With a narcissist, these attacks are far more subtle. Seeping into your consciousness, they are like a slow poison undermining your sense of self-worth, peace, and relationship to your spiritual center. These attacks damage your soul, your energy, and your general sense of well-being, they are not only psychological. These five covert indicators point to a narcissist perhaps targeting your spirituality. One of the first indications a narcissist is spiritually attacking you is a general uncertainty and mistrust. Masters of gaslighting, a manipulative technique whereby they skew reality and get one to doubt their own impressions and memories, narcissists are this perplexity feels like a separation from your inner truth, intuition, it is not only a mental cloud. You begin to doubt yourself in ways you never have done before. You become vulnerable from this spiritual confusion when you lose trust in your own judgment or spiritual insight. The influence of the narcissist drives you to veer from your road and start doubt about your faith, values, and even convictions. The narcissist seems to be purposefully widening the gulf separating you from your spiritual center, leaving you floating and confused. Another subdued indication is your energy running out. Spending time with a narcissist frequently leaves you feeling not only physically but also on a deeper, energetic level, tired. After interactions with them, you could find that you experience an unexplained heaviness, as though your life energy has been sucked off. This is so since narcissists are energy vampire. To stoke their own egos, they consume the emotional, intellectual, and spiritual vitality of others. This drain can cause spiritual tiredness over time, in which case one feels cut off from their inner self, spiritual activities, and even their mission. Your energy is always being spent, hence you may find it more difficult to pray, meditate, or participate in any kind of spiritual activity. This spiritual tiredness is unmistakably evidence of a narcissist targeting you on a level beyond the physical. Your declining self-worth marks the third sign. One of the main ways narcissists find control is by gradually erasing your self-esteem. They do this gently, with backhanded compliments, criticism passed off as compassion, and by contrasting you negatively with others. These strategies undermine your feeling of self-worth over time, therefore rendering you small, unworthy, and inadequate. Targeting your own soul, this spiritual onslaught is very sneaky. It's about feeling cut off from your innate value as a spiritual being. Not only about feeling horrible about yourself. Constant negativity from the narcissist fuels a poisonous inner conversation in which you start to absorb their criticism and view yourself through their warped prism. This spiritual dimness makes you undeserving of love, happiness, even spiritual development. Anxiety and terror are further covert indicators of a narcissist's spiritual onslaught. Narcissists get their kicks from fostering a terror environment to keep you off balance and always anxious. They employ emotional assault, manipulation, and intimidation. This fear permeates your spiritual life and causes you to mistrust the goodness of the cosmos, worry the unknown, and even fear your own spiritual power, not only emotions. Your spiritual activities could cause you to become nervous since you might be doing something wrong or you might not be deserving of divine direction. 
This attack based on fear is meant to keep you tiny and stop you from using your full spiritual strength. Cutting you off from your actual spiritual source, the narcissist wants you to stay reliant on them, to perceive them as your only source of direction and validation. Finally, a strong sense of isolation is unmistakable evidence that a narcissist is spiritually attacking you. Perfect at separating you from others are narcissists. They spread seeds of uncertainty, generate conflict, and cut off your support network to do this. This seclusion is spiritual as much as sociable. The influence of the narcissist causes you to feel cut off from the divine. From your spiritual guide, even from your own soul. Cut off from any higher power or spiritual connection, you could start to feel as though you are alone in the cosmos. One of the most harmful features of a narcissist's attack is their spiritual isolation since it renders you defenseless, weak, and more easily under their influence. You are more prone to consult the narcissist for validation, direction, and support when you feel cut off from your spiritual source, therefore strengthening their grip over you. Ultimately, a narcissist's spiritual attacks are subdued, sneaky, and quite destructive. Their goal is your very soul, not only psychological manipulation. These assaults confuse you, saps your vitality, undermine your self-worth, cause anxiety, and distance you from your spiritual source. If you see these indicators in your connection with a narcissist, you really should act to guard yourself. To rebuild your strength and sense of self, this can entail establishing strict limits, asking for help from others, and reconnecting with your spiritual practices. Recall that your spiritual health deserves to be shielded from the negative influence of a narcissist. It is equally vital as your mental and emotional well-being. Everyone, we want to help people understand and deal with narcissism and narcissistic interactions so they can get their lives back in balance. We want you to think about this question today. What happens when someone gets away from manipulation? Tell us what you think below. Narcissists need to be in charge, have power, and be able to manipulate others in their interactions. They have trouble when their power is questioned because they get a lot of their self-esteem from other people's approval. People who have broken free from narcissistic relationships can show how this insecurity can lead to bad things. For instance, if you're an adult kid of a narcissistic parent and you decide to stop giving them money or move out, they will likely get angry because they enjoy controlling the flow of money. In the same way, narcissists can act worse when they are successful or when they gain power in a relationship. If you leave a toxic selfish boss to be independent, you might also get a bad reaction. In all of these situations, if you try to be independent, you will probably be met with opposition. It's important to know the things selfish people do to stay in charge. When you set limits, their responses, like insults, efforts to put you down, and questions about your skills, can come as a surprise. People who don't like you will often say things like you're bound to fail or your goals are stupid and will make you regret them. As we learn more about these habits, please share your thoughts and personal stories in the comments. People who are narcissists often try to make themselves look like victims by saying things like it's always your fault. They'll say they're unfairly loaded while putting the blame on you. Some people may try to get you to leave them by ignoring you or saying they'll end the relationship if you put work ahead of them. Their dishonest actions are meant to keep their power over you. In response, narcissists may start smear campaigns to spread lies about your new plans. They could stop you from making progress, hide important information, or work together to hurt you. To get over this kind of toxic stress, you need to get away from the stuffy place where your voice was muffled. On this path to self-discovery, you will take back your independence and grow your personality. However, as you stand up for yourself and break free, the narcissist may try to push you back into their web because they hate losing control. They start to see you as a problem once you're no longer under their power. If you don't do what they say, narcissists will always be after power and control because they hate being in charge. This need to be in charge stays with them whether they're a shift boss or the CEO 
getting in the way of your progress to protect their ego. If a narcissist thinks they are losing power over you, they might act like a victim, change how they treat you, or even say they are going to leave. And it can be very sad to realize that this situation has kept you from reaching your goals. There are times when seeing the truth can shock you, even if you had an idea. People who are close to narcissists often think that the narcissists will leave as soon as they feel like they can't handle stress or change. So, in order to keep the friendship going, they might put themselves down. They know that trying to get away could get them laughed at, yelled at, or left behind. As long as the narcissist's wants come first, the relationship can go on. It breaks down though, when this power balance is questioned. The narcissist could get very angry or decide to end the relationship. People in these types of relationships often don't do as much because they're afraid of getting angry or being left alone. You might not even be aware that fear is stopping you from reaching your full potential. It's important to stand up for yourself when you're with a narcissist, even if you're scared of losing control or don't like being in charge. I hope you can get over your fears and find the right life for you. You deserve to be loved and respected for who you are, and you should be in a relationship that helps you grow as a person. Thanks for watching the movie today. This is the reason why you should never drink with an ego. We are going on an amazing trip into the mysterious world where narcissism and alcohol mix, creating complex patterns in people's behavior that look like a kaleidoscope. See how alcohol has deep effects on narcissistic traits that are already strong, turning their essence into clear cues. The complexities of this relationship secrets make ego study very hard. Join us in our quest for information, and let our desire to understand lead us as we make our way through this maze of difficulties. Ask yourself this thought-provoking question, have you seen how a narcissist who was once hurting you changes after a few drinks? If someone is narcissistic, does it show up more openly and without shame? or does it hide in the background muffled and hidden? Share your stories in the comments section below to help other people feel like they are not alone on their way to healing and recovery. With passion in our hearts, we dive right into this enlightening journey, uncovering the secrets that lie within the complex relationship between narcissism and alcohol. Each new piece of information adds to our rich tapestry of understanding as we make our way through the complicated dynamics that control these personalities. Let the trip go on, because the search for understanding has no limits. Without further ado, let us go on a trip into the depths of darkness to learn more about narcissists' volatile personalities. Imagine that a volcano that had been asleep all of a sudden woke up and started spewing out fiery words that destroyed everything in their path. There is a lot of stress in the air, and it builds up to a crescendo of louder screams, curses that burn your soul, and scary acts of physical violence. Look at the scary storm that is forming, it will wipe out any signs of happiness or celebration and swallow everyone up in its evil grip. 2. More Powerful Machiavellian Tricks Now, let's go deeper into the depths of manipulative strategies that are made stronger by drinking. The sneaky narcissist, who is already very good at lying, takes their schemes to a whole new level. When they drink too much, the mask falls apart, showing how bad they really are. Their usual tools get stronger to unimaginable levels as their arrogance grows, feeding a never-ending sense of entitlement, shifting blame, and projecting. Contrary to what most people think, drink doesn't make them less mean. In fact, it makes them more mean, especially when they are covert narcissists. They lose their inhibitions like smoke, which lets them manipulate without limits and push the limits of their plans to catch more people who aren't paying attention. Third, dissociating while drunk the shame shield. The narcissist uses drink as a shield to hide their deep-seated shame. They separate themselves from their true selves behind this wall of protection, making space between their carefully created public persona and who they really are. In this world, they hide from their ugly selves and the terrible truth of their existence. Their veins are numb, which makes them even less sensitive to other people's feelings and worries and less empathetic and kind than they already are. In this state of detachment, they avoid feeling shame and don't take responsibility for the pain they cause others. They stay untouchable because they are drunk on a short-lived sense of invincibility. They are trapped in the strong castle of denial, which protects them from both shame and regret. Revelations that come out of nowhere. 
When alcohol gets into a narcissist's mind, it brings out a lot of hidden facts that will make you very angry. As you become more and more intoxicated, the thin layers of fantasy fall apart, revealing the pure essence that lies beneath their made-up exteriors. Watch the strange paradoxes that appear as their real nature is revealed through two separate channels, making the mystery of their existence even stronger. To begin, projection becomes the main focus and turns into an all-encompassing defense system. It grows into a raging flood and is no longer just a thread going in and out of their conversations. Their anger used to be contained, but now it's in the air around them, waiting to catch victims and onlookers who aren't doing anything wrong. Second, in the middle of the chaos, brief moments of clarity appear, giving us sneak peeks into who they really are. They can see and feel what they really want as the veil quickly lifts. In these rare moments, they may reveal hidden facts about their narcissistic traits, such as short-lived feelings of self-loathing, random moments of empathy, or even an unsettling liking for chaos and drama. These discoveries, like broken pieces of illusions, give us tantalizing glimpses into the deepest parts of things. But be careful, because if you ask them about these statements when they are sober, they will deny them, making sure that they quickly deny being vulnerable. In conclusion, drinking is very bad for narcissists because it upsets their delicate balance. The covert reveal their secret plans, going beyond their normal covert behavior to act in a more obvious way when they are high. Overt people enjoy the spotlight because it makes them look even more grand, while real feelings stay hidden under the enticing surface. Some areas of shame, anger, and raw emotions come to the surface. Although it seems counterintuitive, drinking also gives them a short-term break, a safe place where they can temporarily forget about the problems they caused. As this exciting episode comes to a close, may the effects of these discoveries spread through your mind. Talk about your thoughts, start a conversation, and tell other people about this episode. That's how we'll find comfort, by seeking knowledge and healing. Let the mysterious dance of the never-ending journey of finding go on until our paths cross again.